Welcome to Shaken and Disturbed, everybody. Darren Carp here, along with John Thrasher, Mother God, he is, and Father God, dapping. I am. Oh my God, I haven't like dap like. You haven't dapped in a minute. Dapped. Dap feels like <laughs> doesn't feel like this though. Dap feels like something that should like you should hit I something. Know. You know, like I a dap, agree. a dap. Yeah, but not like this. Anyway, um, guys, look on if Patreon you or YouTube if you want to know what we're talking about. Go. Look on that. Also, uh, <laughs> we talked about this a little bit on our NMR, and I just want to say we got, in case you don't listen to that, yeah. we got the suggestions about my mic. <laughs> it was an input volume <laughs> issue, and it now was. hopefully we're back up and running. But please let us know if I am not back up and running, because this is a you mainly are. auditory experience, so yeah. I would like to be heard. Actually, you're really, that's a great point, Darren. And if you are listening to this episode right now, or hopefully not watching because you should be driving, but if you're in a car, yes, let us know. Does it sound better to you? Because for me- Because a lot of the complaints came from yeah. people in cars and I'm wondering how it's mixed in a car. So. Exactly. And, yeah. you know, we we figured it out. Listen to the NMR that we posted on Patreon. Um, but, um, you know, what I did realize was, you know, sometimes the sound of a car isn't your, obviously your headphones. Right. But yeah. So let us know you guys. Um, I hope, and thank you to Aaron. I think it was Aaron on Facebook who, um, or no, it was Michelle. I'm sorry. Michelle on yes. Facebook. Thank you for, uh, bringing that to our attention. Um, yes. Very helpful. Got, yeah. We've got a little bit shorter of an episode for you guys today. Um, but we thought it would be an interesting one. Darren, you're pretty excited about this one. You kind of teased it on NMR last the other day yeah so this is sort of the i want to say it's a famous case it's just i think people yeah. know the name a lot more maybe than the specifics it's an older case uh the case of natalie wood because she was sort of this hollywood starlet not during our time right so yeah. like this was this was pre-me this is more like my parents grandparents kind of generation <laughs> of them at least uh pre -me, uh <laughs> knowing about it but um, I believe I said on NMR that uh, that this was a submission. Yes, Megan, our lovely researcher and friend of the podcast and worker on this podcast and just all around good human, um, yes. pitched this one to us actually because one of her friends wouldn't shut the fuck up about it. So <laughs> she specifically said wouldn't stop talking about it, LOL. I add in the STFU part about it. But right. I've obviously heard of Natalie Wood. Um, and so, you know, I was one when she was like- <laughs> when yeah. she died so yeah. that's what i'm saying yeah. it's really pre me because i think even oj was such a uh, uh john benet was such a conundrum until i was like well into adulthood so yeah. my parents and grandparents were definitely knew about this case more so than like i think people our age would yeah and this is natalie a very... wood oh. natalie wood if you will um yeah, so thank you to Megan and yeah. uh frankly her friend for not talking really her friend stopping talking about it so that Megan I relate was inspired to pitch this to us and we think it's an interesting one i was thinking did we do this one on martinis and murder i don't remember i was trying to think about this but i don't yeah. think so don't there was some did. recent stuff about it that kind of came out of mm. you know maybe it was a doc or something in the news um but we'll, we'll start the case and and we'll see maybe yeah, we'll along the way what the most details. recent stuff that came out look on the news actually to see like the most sure. recent headline maybe from natalie wood because okay. i want to say it wasn't that long ago but um, let me start this out. Natalie yeah, Wood was go. a famous Hollywood starlet known for her sweeping, notorious film credits, such as Hello, West Side Story, uh, one of my favorites, Gypsy, Miracle on 34th Street, and Rebel Without a Cause, another great one, for which she actually won an Academy Award, which was pretty big. I mean, she, and and I don't need to tell you guys, she was certainly a very good looking, um, yeah, very good looking woman. Listen, so her she, death, this is an Academy yeah. Award winning actress exactly. and there's a lot of mystery around her death. So if you're not familiar with it, it's it's this one's going to be interesting. And if you're into boats, this one will be interesting for that you. Too. So sure. her death as of currently present day is currently ruled as, quote, drowning and other unidentifiable factors, end quote. So mm. to me, it's interesting because drowning feels pretty complete. Right. Like if right. I was like, she suffocated plus other factors, you're like, but the suffocation, it's like the drowning itself would should just be the ruling. So obviously there's a lot going on. That's a mystery here. Unidentifiable yeah. factors. Can I tell you? How do we know that? Can I tell you? I'm so glad you mentioned this right off the top. The unidentifiable factors has got this shit has got to stop the amount of times <laughs> that like, you know, coroners or medical examiners are just throwing in these like vague details about manner manners of death it's like 
what well what are those facts like you must be able to identify something even if it is unidentifiable in terms of but how would you know it relates to her death if it's unidentifiable to your exactly point? so why you know? even like put, why even include that then you know well maybe you know like to me it's just interesting because it, if your lungs are filled with fluid right you died that way if, and, and, and even if that wasn't the reason that you died like you would have died if fluid is in your lungs and and yeah. and so maybe they were like Maybe they couldn't determine if that's what killed her. Like she, they they would know if fluid was in her lungs because if she wasn't breathing, then she, it wouldn't have mattered. But the unidentifiable right. factor says to me that it's either like a cover up, or right. like like even if she had, if you had ten scars on your body, I'm kind of I'm kind of thinking about the staircase documentary, right? Like yeah, where yeah. the wife's head was all like fuck. It looked like it was fucking like bludgeoned to death. Like I get right. not knowing necessarily that like oh it was the candlestick in the room, but wouldn't sure. you be like blunt first trauma to the head? Like I'd still right. know that. That's my I'd point. Still... Yes. I, I'm interesting to talk to an Emmy about it, but regardless. Right. So yeah, let's keep sort going, of yeah. what makes Natalie's death unidentifiable is really the question. And in November right. of 1989, I was a mere one and a half. Oh. 43 year old Natalie Wood was on a trip with her husband, Robert Wagner and Robert. I'm sure many of you in the older generation has have heard of him. He was also an actor. He was known for his television roles in heart to heart and it takes a thief. So Robert and Natalie had their first date on her 18th birthday and they married in December of 1957, then divorced in April of 1958. Now, Natalie remarried for a brief period, but she and Wagner found their way back to each other, remarrying in 1972, which is so Elizabeth Taylor, right? Yeah, She's probably the most famous say. person who's married the same person twice. And you have right. to also remember from a Hollywood perspective, I want to say that this generation of actors this and happens. actresses, yeah. yeah, and like not only that, but they're also, let's say inspired by the the elizabeth taylors i would say even the marilyn monroe's of the well, world it's movie stars we're talking yeah, movie, movie stars, stars. like That's what I'm saying. movie stars don't exist anymore they're not that there's a-list yeah. actors but and there's a-list celebrities but there's no movie star there's just and that's end. and and you know i feel like this generation of actors really i wouldn't say looked up to that previous generation but there were certain patterns and like um you know career behaviors for lack of a better word that i do think this generation of actors really tried to follow to gain that kind of success of the liz taylor's and Marilyn definitely Monroe's, you know excuse me yes definitely i i couldn't yeah. agree more there was certainly like an old hollywood aspect exactly. to it even though That's this was point. like you know 50s 60s 70s is yeah. very like old hollywood especially right. now right. so the trip that actually ended um natalie's life took place on robert's motor yacht called splendor which was captained by Dennis Davern. Uh, this is a longtime employee and friend of Robert and Natalie. Seems like a really fun trip. And along yeah. the boat trip was actor Christopher Walken, who we That's all right. know, of I course, yeah. um, who has always been sort of named in this case as uh, like, like an X factor. Like, what does he know that maybe whatever? Because right. um, he was actually co-starring with Natalie at the time in this film, Brainstorm. So it seems like just a fun boat adventure with friends. Now, yeah. Walken, who is obviously a household name in his own right, has earned an Academy Award, a BAFTA Award, a SAG Award, as well as nominations for two Primetime Emmy Awards and two Tony Awards. So Christopher Walken. Jeez, I didn't even know all that about him. Him along with, I think, Alec Baldwin are like the only two people that apparently have like free open reign to kind of host SNL anytime that they want. I was going to say he's so connected with SNL, but he wasn't ever Any a more cast member, was he? No, no, but yeah, he sort of just has like these such iconic um, cowbell yeah, being yeah, yeah. Uh, certainly one of them. Um, it, it, certainly <laughs> there's been just a lot of iconic scenes with Christopher Walken and he has hosted a, a, a lot of times, a lot of times. Yes. And he played, um, I and he was in Batman. Hello? Max Shrek on Bat in Batman Returns. It was Max Shrek. That's great. That's great. Paul. And he scared the living hell out of me because he pushes when he Selena puts Selena Kyle, Kyle out, the out window. of the window and it was and then cats eat at her. Dream. Yeah. And then she dream. Becomes... <laughs> dream dream situation. Dream. They didn't dream they didn't cast magic in that because he was like, I'm not gonna eat her. I'm just gonna like sit on top of her and suffocate oh my God. her. Slowly. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's that that would be his tactic. But also he they couldn't afford him. Dream. They couldn't yeah, afford dream. him. Uh, yeah, his very, rate is very big rate. That's right. Mm. You should see his rider. It's crazy. It's like <laughs> treats. It's crazy. Keep going. It's meow mix at all levels of Tru the house. Yeah. Truly. 
Also, Magic loves, um, sorry, not to derail this episode, but I found out recently that Magic loves Greek yogurt. So he's fit. Oh, he's yeah, to be cats fit. like Greek yogurt. They like it. Yeah, they like it. Wait, they do like they? It. Is that like a yes. thing? No, I mean, all my cats have loved Greek yogurt. They love it. Oh. It's okay. dairy. Anything like dairy, they're going to fucking love. I guess you're right. I didn't think I don't know. That. I think Greek yogurt's probably better to feed him than like whole milk or half and half. But yeah. Like, I don't keep that around. So that's fine. Yeah. Yeah, anyway, yeah. don't be giving I, him like blueberry hazelnut coffee half and half. Don't be doing that. Trust me, that's not going to happen. Yeah. Um. OK, so Darren set us up there with a lot of interesting information. So Natalie Wood and Robert Wagner's relationship was heavy with conflict, as you would probably expect. During this chap- yeah, during this chapter of their lives, it was alleged by Dennis, actually, that Natalie and Walken had begun an affair during their Ooh film la shoot. La. And as you might expect, this concerned Robert. Um, it was rumored around this time that Natalie was also growing jealous of Robert's Heart to Heart co-star, Stephanie Powers. Okay, we're getting really uh, into the weeds here. Hollywood in the weeds. Now, after a family dinner on Thanksgiving Day in her Beverly Hills home, Natalie and Robert invited friends to come with them on a trip to Catalina Island, mm. which was a favorite weekend boating destination of theirs. Um, but um, most deferred, basically, because of the stormy weather conditions that were about to happen. So they were like... I think I'm good. I don't want to get stuck out in the middle of nowhere in the rain. Have you been to Catalina Island? I want to say it's funny. I was just going to say, um, I've actually really wanted to go. I've told, talked to Nadine about it because it's just like a fun day trip to take. Sure. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I think, um, I would love to go. I would yeah, love to go. Well, now that you know the, well, you probably knew all this before, but now that you know some of these details, it could take on a different kind of light if you travel out there. Well, well, certainly like I, I would demure for stormy weather conditions. Like, yeah. I, like I wouldn't want to go out there if it was shitty because Catalina feels like an out, like boats. For it's sure. Like you want to be out. You want to yeah. be outside. Yeah, exactly. So, okay. So back to this. So Christopher Walken was the only one of the people that were invited that agreed to attend. So now it's basically just the three of them, I believe at this point. So at noon on November 28th, 1981, the three of them left um, about the yacht. The account of this trip would be shrouded in intoxication due to the copious yes. amounts of alcohol consumption throughout the weekend. I think this has been reported pretty pretty widely at this point. Yeah. Throughout the first night, it was reported that Robert and Natalie began to argue. Apparently, Walken refused to intervene. Now, remember, this is like a co-star, a, a, a friend, yes, but it's really a little not- shit and where you eat. Let's just yeah, say that. exactly. It's That's a little really that. Put it. And a little that. Yeah. But he refused to intervene. So Dennis docked the boat and brought Natalie ashore to stay at a motel, actually. Now, when interviewed by police, Dennis originally denied these events, but had to eventually confess because he and the starlet were witnessed actually at the hotel. Mm. The following morning, Natalie decided to stay with her companions and continue enjoying the trip. Sorry to interrupt. I just wanted no, to ahead. say that, like, Dennis originally denying the events, but obviously coming to once he got caught, yeah, says to me that this is it's either a cover up of something or people are very secret in Hollywood and knowing anything yeah. about Hollywood starlets. So it also could just be that that he's like, These are my friends, they're wildly famous, I have right. to protect them at all costs, kind of thing. Yeah, no, that's true, that's a good point. Now, Walk, uh, Walken and Natalie went ashore to a nearby restaurant, later joined by Robert and Dennis. Now, according to their waitress, the group continued to drink, and Natalie didn't eat much of her dinner. So, Ooh, not a good combination. No, not a good combination. Um, lots of really interesting... Uh, it, it's kind of like almost cinematic in a way. Like, in my head, I'm like visualizing like... Who wants to go out on the boat for a fun little weekend? And then it's like, uh, what's going to happen on the boat? Like, I can see the trailer, you know, yeah, like exactly. coming together basically in my head. Well, hindsight's twenty twenty with it for sure. Yeah, absolutely. But guys, before we continue, we want to give a little plug here for our Patreon. We really love every one of you guys that have supported us on the show. We're gearing up for our 2024 physical gift. You guys at the Sussy Radish tier really loved our true crime Beanie Babies that were donated by Darren's personal collection. Uh, and... My mom was going to burn them if you guys didn't take them. So <laughs> thank you. 
Thank you guys. Did your mom know that we sent those out as as yes. fun new true crime? She's things? like, yeah. she's like, hey, you want more? What about the 2027 yeah. gift? I'm we, good with that. You know like, what? Okay, we mom. we do have a handful left over still, so we may do a second wave of if, for those of you who didn't get to sign up when we we had it going on the, earlier this year, but. Um, yeah, it's something really exciting we're working on. That's not, by the way, that's not the 2024 gift. I'm just saying yeah. there could be some other stuff in the works. But um, yeah, the 2024 gift is coming. We think it's going to be really fun. Um, so you might want to sign up now, Darren. Yeah. You tell well, out? you don't have to be the sussy radish tier to enjoy the fun. You can join yeah. as a friend, best friend, radish, or sussy radish for as little as five dollars a month, which is like a fraction. If you listen to our NMR of any of those TV <laughs> subscriptions, for as right. little as five dollars a month, you get years of bonus content, blogs, videos, photos. Most of most of which uh, were not shared anywhere else. Yeah, and your support via Patreon really goes a long way in helping keep the show's bills paid and for us to be able to create and put out new content every single week. I was thinking about this the other day. We, aside from a couple of weeks, you know, where things were going on in the summer and the holidays, okay? Yeah. We have been a nonstop content farm for all of y'all. So we really appreciate those of you who have chosen to support us. It really does mean the world to us. So thank you so much. It really does. Even all of your comments, like it really means a lot. Check it out <laughs> yes. at patreon.com slash shaken and disturbed or click the link in our show notes of this very episode. Our show notes. Our show notes of the very go. episode. Okay, all right, back guys. to Catalina Island. Back to Catalina Island, back to Christopher Walken and Natalie Wood. Okay, so... <laughs> Again, she didn't eat a lot and she's drinking. Not a winning combination for anyone, no matter the age that you are, how used to you are to drinking. Now, notably, right. Natalie left the restaurant highly intoxicated and stumbling yeah. around. To, and also, this is kind of like Lacey Peterson, where like her walking her dog at too. eight. Where like she's walking her dog at eight months pregnant. Like it's not just anyone walking their dog at eight months pregnant. Like it's right. Natalie fucking Wood. They're gonna fucking know. They're paying attention to Natalie yeah. fucking Wood. It's not just yeah. another patron who's walking out drunk. Is my point. Like yeah. people are gonna remember more details about this just because it's so like off the beaten path a touch. Yeah, I would agree. So around 10 p.m. Saturday, November 28th, 1981, the group boarded on the dinghy. The dinghy. The dinghy. And the dinghy, which is what I really want to buy, and return to the yacht. Uh, dinghy is a good cat name. Side note. Okay, good. Okay, got um, it. Thank just, you for that. Just FYI, I just wanted to say that dinghy is a good cat name. Um, <laughs> just saying it. Uh, okay. So then they returned to the It would not yacht. be my new cat's name if I got one. Just saying. Just, okay. Magic and dinghy. Dinghy. Listen, you want to be a childless cat lady, you said, so you need to get a cat and name it dinghy. Done. Nadine's Done. not around. Fine. Right. No problem. Surprise her with dinghy and dinghy too. <laughs> now, <laughs> around midnight, Robert claimed to have been talking with Dennis and Walken when he noted Natalie had gone out to the deck of the boat. When he later looked for her, he realized that his wife was nowhere to be found. Which is not this, a good thing when you're on a boat, by the yes, way. Yes, I mean, that's sort of like the fun thing about a cruise is in theory. Right. Like, you can let your kids kind of go off for the day because they're on a cruise. They like, can't be lost. They can't possibly uh, be lost. You'd hope. You'd hope. Um, yeah. So you can't find her. And this obviously contradicts the accounts of nearby boat owner Marilyn Wayne. In 2011, Marilyn Wayne, a California resident, claimed to have heard Natalie Wood crying for help around mm. midnight. You know, boating is a very quiet culture, too. So hearing someone scream would be pretty notable. How accurate the time is, it's, not, you know, obviously people had watches, but like how accurate the time was, yeah. hard to say. And I, if I can just jump in, too, I just want to say this Marilyn Wayne made this. Uh, uh detail i guess you could say in 2011 this was all happening in 1981 so like i'm not discrediting her i i don't know much more about it than what right. we're but it's 30 right years now. later or whatever yeah so it's, it's like right that's a long time to just be like oh by the way in 2011 i have this random thought that i never but then shared. again you know i studied this in psychology and i'm blanking on the name but it's like I can remember almost everything about September 11th, even though it was 20 years ago. In fact, it was, right. you know, today. 23 years ago today. Like, yeah, I remember everything just because that was like, a, that's like the snapshot yeah, in time. Of yeah. So you have a better memory. But yeah, you can't just rely on people's memory. It's obviously fallible. And just on that note, really quickly, I did post on my Facebook today a couple of thoughts from 9-11 when I was a 10th grader. And the yeah. reason was so that I can remember it later, like almost like a little journal. Like it'll yeah. pop up in my Facebook memories every September 11th. And I can be like, oh yeah, that did happen. Because 
a couple of weird things happened to me that day. Go check it out on my Facebook if you haven't seen it yet. But anyway, I will. Back yeah, to this. it's weird to think that it's been 23 years. But um, I know it is. Yeah. Okay, so according to ABC News, quote, California resident Marilyn Wayne, who was boating in the same area that night, approximately 40 yards away from the Splendor, not far, mm -hmm. the yacht upon which the actors were staying, quote, a quote within the quote, a woman's yeah. voice crying for help from drowning awakened John and he awakened me. Help me, someone, mm. please help me. I'm drowning, we heard repeatedly. Alarmed, I called out yeah. to my son who also heard the cries and looked at the new at his new digital watch. It was just minutes after 11 p.m., she said in her statement. Now, according to Wayne's statement, Payne turned on the sailboat's beam light and played it over the area while she went up onto the deck, though it was oh. dark and damp, and she says she was unable to see anything, end quote. Okay. So, regardless, the Coast Guard was notified of Natalie's disappearance from Splendor around 3.30 a.m., which is just a long time from when she claimed to have heard that scream, and yeah. six... A.M. that morning, the Los Angeles County Lifeguard Division of Catalina Island joined the search. And at 7.45 a.m. on November 29th, 1981, the body of mm. actress Natalie Wood was found in the water face down off the coast of Catalina Island. And when she was found, she was only wearing a nightgown, socks, and a down jacket. Now, let me just say, an intoxicated woman on a boat, obviously this happens in yacht culture all the time. This isn't the first person to get fucking drunk on a yacht. But an angry right super intoxicated, perhaps kind of weak in the fact that she didn't eat anything, gets into bed, goes outside, falls and slips and drowns. Not unheard of, not crazy, yeah. not wild theories. Yeah. And you know what? This is bringing up a lot of imagery and thoughts and memories about the really tragic and untimely death of Naya Rivera in oh, July God, 2020. Yeah. Remember, everyone was like, she parked her car weird and then went out yeah. like the glee curse or whatever absolutely there was all that now the only thing that seems sussy to me is the fact that the uh you know coroner said unidentifiable um, right of things course. along with drowning so it's like if she was just shit-faced and fell off the side and happened to drown because she's been so intoxicated wouldn't that just did be she enough? hit a propeller yeah yeah like is that what oh, that yeah. is did she hit something Ugh. like that did you know in in a couple hours since she showed up like I, I, yeah. I don't think a lot of uh, creatures would have gotten to her, but like they would know that, right? Like we would know would a shark that, bite. I was going to say, I would, I would think that they would have, and can you excuse me for one second? I just need to scratch my back with my, um, no. uh, my with back a, scratcher. Are you my dad? Like, yeah. My dad well, wears this mother. like house shirt and he wears, he just like rotates like the same house shirts. And I'm like, dad, I'm burning these house shirts. Like it's done. Cause he's like, what? I can just slobber all over him. And he has like a hole in the back of it. I was like, why do you have a hole in the back of your shirt? Oh, he's like, from my back scratcher. And I was like, dad, if we are vigorously back scratching, like the wow. shirt is disintegrating on top of you. I was like, I will buy you a new $15 shirt. Like, please yeah. dear God, sir. But there's yeah. some attachments. There's something there's people thing. have attachments. Um, I love that I just had that sitting next you to me. You just whipped it out. Yep. It. Yeah. But anyway, I just want to say, yes, exactly. And like, there was a lot of mystery, if you remember, with Naya Rivera's death, which, you know, also happened, was a drowning incident. She was out on a lake in California. Um, her son was like with her and survived. I think he was like three or something at the she time. She got like caught under a boat maybe there's nobody the knows nobody knows but how i just drowned. remember looking at the footage of how her car was parked which was outside of her death she was parked like an asshole like taken up like three spots and so i remember mm. that sort of being the theory of people thought that she wasn't in the right mindset at the same yeah. time i don't remember anyone else being parked in that parking lot so like if you thought that no one else was gonna park there Listen. like who cares how you're parked but like yeah, I just so, remember that being sort of a hmm. Yeah, another mysterious drowning yes, situation. Yes. You know, we should probably do an episode on that just to just to cover it because I don't we should. Know. There was a lot of stuff. I don't, you know, there was no foul play involved uh, officially, but I don't know. You just have to wonder how on earth something like that happens. It just seemed way too not convenient. When the but kids survived and we still yeah, don't know. Exactly. Because you think they would have sort of I don't know. Anyway. But anyway, nonetheless, we're here on this case. So according to the New York Times, who also covered some more of these details, quote, Miss Wood's body was found floating just beneath the surface about 200 yards from where a small inflatable motorized dinghy was uh, lodged dinghy. in a small cove at Blue Cavern Point. 
The point is half a mile from the Isthmus Cove, where the splendor was moored. The autopsy revealed that she had bruised her left cheek in the fall, possibly being rendered temporarily unconscious. Which would make sense. Okay. Exactly. Miss Wood's blood alcohol level was 0.14%, the result <laughs> of having consumed seven or eight glasses of wine during the evening. Yeah. A person is considered under the influence of alcohol at 0.10%. Dr. Noguchi speculated that Miss Wood's, quote, slight level of intoxication had been a contributing factor in her death. To wasn't her death, it 0.08? Me. Wasn't that wasn't that the standard for driving, at least? So maybe like so. Is, maybe the under the influence of alcohol, like I still thought if you were above a 0.08, if you breathalyzed above that, technically you were driving under the influence. I could be wrong about that, but I thought I that it, was like the main yeah. either way, 0.14. She's drunk. Yeah, for sure um clearly i mean she seven or eight glasses of wine even for a bigger person which yeah. she was not well like, and remember this was hours and hours after she went missing apparently as well so maybe she was even drunker potentially yeah that's that's a good point know? right exactly and apparently when the dinghy was located the ignition was off the gears were set to neutral and the oars were locked and her death was ruled hmm. as accidental well, of course, this leaves the public to speculate whether this was truly an accident or if foul play was, in fact, involved. Now, Natalie's sister, Lana, who uh, has been quoted in a CNN interview stating, quote, my sister was not a swimmer and did not know how to swim, and she would never go to another boat or, uh, or excuse me, or to shore dress in a nightgown and socks, end quote. I mean... Most people, even if they knew, I mean, I know how to swim and I wouldn't go to another boat or shore in the middle of the night when I was drunk. Same. You know, it's hard to say. And I, 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 obviously there's tons of speculation, but I could see depending on what type of fighter she was. And this isn't exclusive to women, but I just I have experience with them. Like, yeah. it's it's possible that she was threatening to jump in so he would come and save her. You mm. know, it's she was so drunk that maybe she was like, I'm just going to. Go yeah. off here, you know, and 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 something happened, and he didn't want to be responsible for it because she was sort of out of her mind. It's hard to say, and I'm not yeah, blaming yeah, yeah. her. I'm just saying that no, like yeah, yeah. there could have been a number of like sort of innocuous circumstances of this couple fighting exactly. that actually ended in this tragic death. Yeah, that's true. Well, according to Doctor Naguchi, who was the chief coroner of the Natalie Wood case, he claims she tried to board the dinghy after being inebriated. An unknown argument hmm. had then broken out between the parties on the boat and Natalie stepped out. So how that's, would he know that? Yeah, how? why is he making this claim? Her right. coat may have even um, added up to 40 pounds to her body, adding to the potential of drowning. Because I guess if you're jumping into water or falling into the water and a giant, webby, heavy, coat. wet, 40 pound coat, that's definitely going to be very hard to come up out of. But, you know, of course, due to her intoxicated state, she may not have been able to take it off. And then that's what could have potentially happened. Um, there were also scratch marks on the dinghy, implying that she held on to it until she lost consciousness due to maybe like hypothermia or exhaustion, which is also which, really sad. It's also, you know, she could have been too drunk to kind of maybe hoist herself up on that. She got into right. the water. I mean, if the woman and neighbor heard that she was drowning and she yeah. sort of drifted to the dinghy, like all of that is possible. Like, I mean, yeah. I've known people, I know a, a person, I never knew him, but like I know of a story of someone um, personally to me mm -hmm. that died because they were an alcoholic mm. and they got drunk and fell into the snow and died there okay. from hypothermia because they were too drunk to get up. You know, oh I mean, goodness, like this. I'm this, sorry this, to hear that. This does happen. This, yeah. you know, alcohol can be Freak a really accident thing. And yeah. so like, think of, I've been exhausted sober in the ocean before, <laughs> hoisting yourself up onto those things like as a young person like getting up onto a thing like it takes a lot of effort let alone you're intoxicated you have a 40 pound coat on you're not yeah. thinking of taking it off it's your coat whatever um yeah. a number of just like situations that this could have been it might not have been a big mystery after all this could just be like it's true you know you know anyway yeah and robert was even vocal about the um has been ver vocal about the verdict that natalie must must have fallen into the water due to the slick algae on the boat's ladder. I mean, also you possible. have to consider all this stuff, right? However, Naguchi actually disagreed due to the untouched algae on the boat's ladder and glass shards found in the boat's common area. But hmm. again, why is Naguchi weighing in on this stuff? I'm not sure I really like that. But yeah. nonetheless, they're weighing in. 
Well, Robert actually blamed it on choppy waters, but Dennis kind of had a different story. He claimed that a jealous fit broke out uh, about Natalie and Walken. Again, this could be like an abusive. Yeah. He allegedly heard Robert yell, quote, what are you trying to do? Fuck my wife, end quote. Ooh. Now, according to claims by Dennis. Oh, thank you. Mm-hmm. According to claims by Dennis, after the fighting between Natalie and Robert, he'd heard the dinghy being untied. Mm. Which would also track in terms of just being in a very aggravated state, it would be even harder for you to like hoist yourself up on any sort of dinghy or whatever. Yeah. Robert returned to Dennis's cabin shortly. Robert discouraged Dennis's notion to turn the floodlights on or turn on the engine. Due to these okay. ca- due to these claims, now him discouraging Jen- Dennis to turn the floodlights on to check if she's drowning is a little sussy to me. That's sussy if true, for sure. Um, but due to these claims, Natalie's case was actually reopened in 2011. So this is why, obviously, I think it's been mm. in the news lately. In 2012, yeah. lately, it's past yeah. 14 yeah, years. Yeah, yeah. But still, for a case that's 35 years old, whatever, you'd think that, you know, that's kind of new information. Yeah. In, in 2012, the new investigation changed her to cause of death from accidental drowning to drowning and other unidentifiable factors. So right. maybe that's what it is, is they can't really determine whether or not it was purposeful or accidental. And so, I guess so yeah, hard to say. But this verdict mostly focuses on the bruising on Natalie's body. Now, according to the chief medical examiner, Dr. Lakshmanan, this one's going to be a With hard a really last, tough name. last name. Yes, uh, Sathi of Vajasawaran. <laughs> Sathya Wait a minute, Vaj- what was that syllable there? Sathy a Vag is Warren. That's as Sathya close as Vaj- we can Warren. get, you guys. I'm yep. sorry, I don't mean to butcher it. It is just not, it is hard for me. Not not purposeful. So Dr. S, in his report, quoted, <laughs> yeah. with the presence of fresh bruises in the upper extremities in the right forearm, left wrist area, and a small scratch in the anterior neck, mm. the examiner is unable to exclude non-academic non-accidental mechanism causing these industry injuries uh the location of the bruises the multiplicity of the bruises lack of head trauma meaning she didn't hit a propeller right or facial bruising support bruising having occurred prior to entry in the water these aren't her hitting the rocks um you know these are like someone grabbing her which would sort of make sense in a fight Now, since there are unanswered questions and limited additional evidence available for evaluation, it is opined by this medical examiner that the manner of death should be left as undetermined. Um, Is it possible that they got into a physical altercation? He grabbed her, left bruises, and she said, fuck you, and left in a dinghy and still drowned? 100%. Like, that doesn't mean that he killed her, necessarily. Now, Robert Wagner has been deemed, quote, not a suspect in the current investigation as of 20. I don't know how he could not be a suspect. Like, A, it's always the husband and B, he was on the fucking boat. (laughs) Fair enough. I'm also, well, I want you to finish this and then I have a thought. As of 2013, the case is still open and ongoing, but there isn't enough definitive evidence to come to new conclusions and close the case. Regardless, the death of actress Natalie Wood is a tragedy, and the gruesome and inconclusive materials, as well as the famous name attached, have kept it in one of Hollywood's most scandalous cold cases. Yeah. I mean, one of the things that I'm thinking of, too, is not that this is a a factor, but I would love to, if I was in a private investigator, I would be looking into life insurance, you know, maybe this was all a setup potentially, you know, I'm not saying anybody that feels like something not rich people do. That's a good point. And these are all rich people Yeah, because they're all famous Hollywood actors. Like, I guess it's possible if they were in some sort of like gambling debt, but it tends to be people who are feel like yeah. they have no other option and these no you're right you're right do. but yes no that's an interesting point if there was something larger with it but to me just from these details it always just felt like a lover's quarrel gone wrong yeah, mixed did, with intoxication yeah. and a heated moment of sort of walking out of the house without your shoes on because you're so pissed off kind of yeah that. and this happened 100%. to be on a boat when it was dangerous to do that so yeah, and also I want to mention that I'm doing some quick behind the scenes looks here. Natalie Wood, What Remains Behind was an HBO Max documentary that aired in 2020. So that's somewhat new. Right, yeah, that is. Um, I was also curious what Christopher Walken had to say, if anything, about about this. Um, 
A quick Google search uh, says that five years after Natalie's death, Walken told People, quote, I don't know what happened. She slipped and fell in the water. I was in bed then. It was a terrible thing. So he's claiming to have a very hands-off approach about this. But but then doesn't it make the Selena Kyle scene a little bit different now? Like, don't you kind of look at this in a different light? I do. I mean, the truth is, is that, like, could he be lying? Sure. I don't know how big the boat was. But at the same time, like, it's entirely feasible. If I was on a boat with my friends and they were fucking having it out and it was the hundredth time that they've had it out, especially oh, if it sure. was about me, I'm yeah. like, I'm fucking going to bed. I don't yeah. want to deal with this. Everyone's drunk and be obnoxious. Um, we've all yeah. sort of been there. Like, and it just yeah. happens that this one happened to be a worse obnoxious, you know, like yeah, ended yeah, in obviously yeah. tragedy, but like that hundred percent could easily happen, you know, especially yeah, when it's I just get... like, they're arguing about jealousy. Like, it's yeah, annoying. who wants, who wants to deal with that anyway? So I agree. Yeah. And that, by the way, as far as I can tell, this was in, I think 1986, he made that statement. As far as I can tell, that's the last time he's ever it. spoken about it. So, and I'm, and you know what, if I was on a boat and a friend died, a co-star, me, kind of odd circumstances. Yeah. No, I said a friend. Oh. Um, yeah. Great. Oh, yeah. I, I have some friends. I'll just, I'll just turn my camera off. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. I could see not wanting to come close, you know, because you get in trouble for things you say, not for things you don't say. Oh, uh, okay. If he so says saying... one detail, you know, if he says, yeah, they were fighting and That's blah, true. blah, 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 that opens a whole new can of worms. We're like, why didn't you go out? Why and didn't do you that? do yeah. that? Or, you what know, did you, you know that she was a psycho or he was crazy? Like, yeah. <laughs> You know, it's like, don't talk to the cops. Right. It's kind of like no, that right. attitude. So I don't judge him for that, really. No, you're right. This makes me want to watch the documentary now. I wish I would have watched it before we recorded, but maybe, um, we maybe, will. I'll, yeah, maybe I'll watch it and add a little uh, extra bonus episode or something. But yes, you guys can go do that and listen to this episode after or before, whatever works for you, whatever floats your boat. Uh, um, You can uh, hit us up at Jay Thrasher and Carfe Darren. Uh, you can hit us up in our uh, Facebook group or, of course, on Patreon, where we are responding to each and every one of your comments and DMs. Yeah. Let's get into some listener shout outs. I will kick us off here at the end. Um, I wanted to give a quick shout out to a couple of friends, Vinny and Lauren, who have may, oh. who may have just subscribed and are listening for the very first time, Darren. Oh, yes. Now you say you say Lauren or Lauren. Lauren. Oh, we've I talked about Lauren. this before. You say yeah. Lauren. I say it's like Lauren. you say bagel and I say bagel. I don't do that. How dare you? Sweetie. Um, we say recently bagel. discussed your face. It's so funny. <laughs> we discussed the perils and frankly, the successes of Tinder recently at a Ooh. Pirates game. Yeah. 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 Some of us prefer it and some of us are like, what is actually fucking happening on this app right now? Um, also, I've been on everyone... that app in like 14 years. Good I'd be so you. curious. It's cool. Let it's me say this. Yeah. Let me say this. I just told Darren this before the show. I'm on Tinder. I'll get, you know, I'll match with somebody. We'll be talking three, three weeks, four weeks in. Next thing I know. Why are you talking me... to someone for three to four weeks before meeting I know them? that's a good point too. But let me just say this. Then he'll suddenly be like, by the way, you should come over and meet my husband. I said, right. Why are people me? using that for friendships? Or well, that's it's the thing. obviously poly shit or whatever. They poly, want like a fun open. third, but make that clear at the very beginning. You know what I'm saying? This is exactly what we were talking about at the game today. So anyway, um, just want to give a quick shout out to Vinny and Lauren. Although Lauren, let me, if you're Darren, let me just say before I get to the next, next shout out, I remember this was 12 years ago. I was in an open relationship and I was dating other women you at the were? time. And I, yeah. And I remember, um, when I go on dates with girls, I'd be mm -hmm. like, what's the etiquette of telling mm. them that I'm in an open relationship? Because if I tell right. them the first thing, we right. don't really even know if this is going to be a thing. Right. So like, well, that's true. do I have to divulge that first thing? But at the same time, it's like, am I being, <clears throat> am I, am I manipulating them? Because if we kiss and I tell them I'm in an open relationship, are they going to feel taken advantage of? Like they open themselves up to me when I'm not necessarily the most available for what they'd want. So there was like an mm. etiquette. I do feel if you're talking to someone for three to four weeks, they should know that. And eventually oh. like I would, yep. <laughs> I said it. Oh, I said it yes, recorded and I, I said it live. And part of this is my responsibility at this point too, because like I said, everybody is in an open relationship. Right, so just assume days. it now, just assume it. Especially it's in gay a lot. man worlds. Yeah, just assume it. 
Um, By the way, next NMR, I'm going to be grilling you about your open relationship. I don't think I knew that. It wasn't with it wasn't with 8 a.m. or was it? It was not 8 a.m. I was going to say because that. Oh does my not... god, I forgot about that nickname. It was not with 8 a.m. Yeah, that was from that's a throwback from Martinis and Murder. By the way, yes, Magic is doing zoomies all through the room. If you hear a cat uh, screaming and well, running. maybe you can like not blur your background so we could all see him doing zoom oh, zooms. Oh no, but... I'm in my oh. room and it's not a healthy place to be. Anyway, oh. keep going. Well, I personally wanted to shout out Amanda in our Facebook group for linking me to oh, the yeah. Elaine from Seinfeld dance contest video that happens every year. This, on right? Oh my God, yeah. I would crush. Um, but these women are just so good and they have the right hair for it and the right dress. It's really for it. amazing. Yeah. The right hush puppies. It's really, okay. truly amazing. Thank you, Amanda, for knowing me inside and out. I just wanted to say that. Let me ask you this, you know, Halloween is coming up. Is there any world where you would dress up as Elaine for for like a Halloween party or something? Have you ever dressed as Elaine? I've never gone as any Seinfeld character ever for okay. Halloween. Um, okay. And maybe I should. I mean, it's maybe. harder to pull off yeah. real like because there's Sit not like anything people. like crazy about it's like going as like will and grace it's like how would you know like i guess i could <laughs> wear a like point. a red wig and yeah. like take you around well, yeah um, well then there you go am but, i jack or will though but maybe oh hmm? a little bit of both thank you i appreciate it. that's a great that's, a that's what i would think too i think you're a little bit of both yeah okay. um Anyway, but once again, guys, join us on Patreon if you haven't yet. Patreon.com slash shaken and disturbed. And don't forget to check out our pretty faces, cute outfits, and John's perfect hair on YouTube. All these links oh. are in the show notes as well. So we make it uh, easy for you. Yeah, you wrote that line. That's so weird, John. I didn't put that in. I erased it and then. Excuse back in. me. That's You're weird. not supposed to give away our. My weird that you wrote that in. John is the you... best looking guy ever. Well, John, I'm not, wa- I'm not reading You're this. You're like, I don't want to say this. Listen, I'm Aaron a is a piece of shit. What is wrong with you? What is yeah? And then I make you read. I'm going to make a section of the show where I make you read stuff. And this is like, like it or not, yeah. Anchorman. You know when yeah, he's like he'll yeah, read exactly. anything on the teleprompter. Yeah. It's like yeah. that. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. All right. Well, thanks for listening, you guys. Hit us up everywhere as we just mentioned, and uh, we'll see you guys next time. And don't forget to take your Zyrtex. Yep, and don't eat hot dog weenies out of the package like John Thrasher because it's disgusting. Sorry, I don't I do say. that. But no, okay. You're lying, but that's fine. Okay. Can't okay. stand you. Bye. Okay. Bye. Bye.